Well hello it's Cliff here from Down Under in this video I want to talk about thread milling cutters thread milling cutting for your CNC mill cutters for thread milling attachment on a lathe and cutters for thread milling on Thread Express make your own large thread milling cutter off the shelf cutters and make your own tiny little internal thread milling cutters. Well let's start by looking at it on the machine. So we have the fly cutter shank, in this case it's 16 millimeters, it's like a boring bar shank and um, it can be projected out of the cutter holder, in this case a 16 millimeter flatted shank or set screw cutter holder and it can pre be projected down Obviously it has to come down the length of the thread so that the part you're cutting is clear of the cutter holder and the spindle. So this is a real advantage because you can project the shank down only as far as you need to go. The, the stubbier and shorter it is the better obviously because it is a lot less flexible. The further down you have to go the, the more flexible it is. And that's why I think for my type of work a 16 millimeter or 5.8 shank is a good diameter. It allows me to project down a good long length so I can cut long threads. You can see I've got the geometry on that cutter ground to cut with the spindle running anti-clockwise because I want to cut from the front in this case and fire the chips away from me. You never want to be peering into the cut while the chips are coming towards your eyes even if you've got safety glasses on it's bad practice so I could have the cutter on the other side of the thread and then I could run it clockwise and have the geometry of the of the uh, cutter ground the other way but in this case it's an anti-clockwise cutter so that's my reasoning for a 5.8 or a 16 millimeter shank is that it's stiff enough to project a long way um, because it's an external cutter the actual diameter of the shank doesn't matter too much because the diameter of the fly that's spinning around like a little fly uh, can be reasonably big obviously you don't want a fly cutter to be too big because then you have to slow your rpm down of your spindle and the whole process begins to take a lot longer so you it's a, it's a classic compromise between uh, sort of constraints on each extreme. But I've found by trial and error that this is quite a good middle of the road compromise. A 16 millimeter shank spinning at quite high RPM still because it's carbide and the diameter is not too big and yet it's still really stiff. Okay, well let's have a look at these cutters on the bench. So here we have the one I use the most, 100 millimeters long, 4 inches, or a 16 millimeter diameter, 5.8, with a 45 degree fly cutter in the end. You can see there with a grub screw, a couple of facets at 45 degrees. That's the one I use 90% of the time. A longer version of the same thing smaller 12 mil cutter but the the long threads need the stiffness of I think at least 16 millimeters and a 90 degree cutter that allows you to cut right up to under the head and you can see there with that one it's very squat there's very little metal beyond the cutter and the grub screw is coming in from the diameter and that's used occasionally for thread milling, continuing a thread on of a bolt or a screw up under the thread. Um, but this is the main stream design that I use the most. So let's have a look at a drawing of that. You might want to pause your screen for a minute. So we're looking at 45 degrees. A, I think it's a five millimeter grub screw in there off that facet and I just use worn or broken carbide cutters 
I get those from uh, friends in the industry. I don't have so many myself. It's interesting how you get a lot more cutters when you work for a boss than you do when you're self-employed. Anyway, I've got heaps of those and so I just grind them up with a diamond grinding wheel and lap them up with a diamond lap and you can sharpen them up uh, from time to time when they get dull as well. Having a look at it briefly, to machine those flats you can tip it over in your vise at 45 degrees with an end mill. Here's your end mill. Zip, mill the top off, side end mill there, you've got your 90 degrees. Drill a hole through at 6.5 from the end, ream it 5 millimeters. Put a little grub screw in. Then you can use high tensile steel, um, just pre ground 5, 8, 16 mil high tensile steel, or you can, as I have, use an 01 steel, uh, make it a bit bigger, harden it, and then cylindrical grind it. That allows you to grip it with a grub screw and not be too worried about bruising the shank. Um, but if you're using high tensile steel, you'll need to either hold it in a uh, ER32 type collet chuck or uh, put a soft button on the end of your grub screw if you're using a flatter shank, set screw holder or um, have a flat down the side of the cutter shank. So their external thread milling inserts, there's some details there of the under the head thread extender type at 90 degrees. Okay, well let's look at some internal thread milling cutters. Here we have an off the shelf cutter. Obviously there's a huge range of those. The only downside of these are when they get dull, they're not much good for anything else. Whereas if you make your own, for example here, that's a multi-tooth one I ground out of an old end mill. But equally, you can grind a single tooth one. Now this is very like an internal boring bar for a lathe or an internal screw cutting tool for a lathe. So it has multiple uses. You can see that's just been ground out of an old tungsten carbide end mill. Um, you can lap that up with a diamond lap to sharpen it. And um, so this has a lot of uses, has a lot of things going for it. You need something like a little D-bit grinder to grind the form um, with a diamond wheel. How close can I get without blurring out? That's a bit better, isn't it? Also, I've got a range of shanks for internal thread milling which have inserts in them. And you see there there's a tungsten carbide insert in it and it's very near the end and there's no grub screw on the end it's held in with a grub screw from the other end pressing down a long metal insert which clamps on the tungsten carbide cutter so I've got a large one, a medium sized one, and where is it? And a tiny one. And they've all got internal threads and uh, long stems to put the pressure on the grub screw. So it's worth thinking about making your own because you can sharpen them up and adapt them and project them out of their collets so that you get the maximum stiffness because as you probably know success in milling especially when you're thread cutting with a fairly deep form is all about having a sharp cutter and a stiff cutter the minimum projection possible a large external 16 mil cutter like this you can just project it out as far as you have to go and that way it's going to flex a lot less It'll cut more cleanly with a better surface finish and give you, this is jumping in and out of focus, isn't it? And give you 
uh, a much longer lasting cutting edge. Okay, I thought I'd just go into briefly how you grind your tungsten carbide cutters. I won't go into it in great length in this video, it'll be just too long winded. But if you have a D-bit grinder with a diamond grinding wheel, then you can do quite advanced work. For example, you can rotate the cutter and grind that neck in it, which allows you to grind your own internal cutters, and then you can grind the angles of the thread. Um, but if you don't have a D-bit grinder, you can just buy some grinding wheels and mount them on a basic off-hand grinder. Um, you can buy uh, second-hand grinding diamond grinding wheels, or you can buy them from China. You'll get a bit of rub, wobble and run out with them. But I've produced a video on how you can dress substandard diamond grinding wheels. If you look on my channel uh, in the playlists, you'll find a very popular video on how to dress a, a diamond grinding wheel with run out or that's rounded or that's glazed, and you can get it better than new. There's a really good process, so have a look at that video if you're interested in diamond grinding tungsten carbide. Um, so let's say you pick up one of these Chinese grinding wheels and you mount it up on a little offhand grinder, those of you who don't have a D-bit grinder, and um, dress it and then you can, for example, have your tool bit mounted in the actual boring bar so that you can then grind it. I'm trying to do it while I'm holding uh, the camera, but you won't get it, it won't get too hot and you can just move it lengthways, grind it, measure your angle with a thread gauge, grind the uh, flat on it. You'll find tungsten carbide grinds quite quickly with diamond. But a note of caution, please be careful not to breathe the dust in. But wear a dust mask or have an extractor fitted to your machine or at the very least fill your lungs with air away from the grinding, hold your breath. If you're only grinding for 20 seconds or something, just don't breathe in the vicinity of grinding and then go away, fill your lungs up with the air somewhere else, come back and carry on. Um, if you want to do a quick bit of grinding, well, that's what I do, or I wear a mask and use an extractor if I'm going to be grinding for quite some time. Well, thanks for watching that video. If you found something there useful, please like, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and stay tuned and we'll catch you next time.